Welcome back to Just Nigeria, the show for today's social media generation. I am Wali Fakile. Coming up, meet Lisa Sumanu, the social entrepreneur passionate about making education accessible to all. That's on Check Me Out. But first, the World Health Organization says air pollution kills an estimated 7 million people worldwide every year. Many of these deaths are in sub-Saharan Africa. Solomon Sewanja reports from Nairobi for Just Nigeria that African scientists have developed a low-cost air pollution sensor that is easy to use and allows citizens to record and monitor air quality in their community. Tina and her one-year-old daughter Clarissa live next to a steel mill in Mukuru, a pollution hotspot on the edge of Nairobi. The white powdery ash from the mill has to be washed away every day. The particles and some other sm black smoke that normally comes out, that is the worst thing. When you breathe those particles, it's so painful. At this local clinic, the number of cases of pneumonia, asthma and chest infections has doubled in the last 12 months. The World Health Organization recognizes air pollution as one of the causes. Cecilia can hardly breathe. And Borita's lung capacity is not what it should be. There are nearly three quarters of a million people living in this community and many of them are struggling to breathe because of the air quality. There's a team of African scientists who have come up with ways of measuring the air quality here and they think that it is a step forward in finding a solution to this problem. These low-cost air pollution sensors are easy to install. They detect and record the amount of dangerous small particles in the air. That data is then transmitted to a website where it can be accessed by anyone for free. Our data is accurate, which means anyone in any city across any African country will be able to use it, deploy it, and get real-time local data for their neighborhoods that they can use to petition governments to solve problems that they face around air pollution. That is what the community living next to this asphalt factory did after they started having breathing problems. They installed sensors in their homes. Our campaign got the attention of the, um, of the media and uh, the government agencies that were ignoring us before. The director of the environment agency came over and instructed the, um, the factory to shut down and, and only open after they um, complied with, the, with their laws. Another part of town, Rashida and Nazil, who like Tina, live next to a steel mill, are still mourning their two-year-old daughter who died in April. The cause of death was a respiratory disease that the doctor said could be caused by air pollution. Now, they are worried about their surviving son. Look at all these inhalers. I have to use this. The doctors are wondering, you know, this is too much for him. He's only six years old. He's coughing. When he coughs, he coughs for a whole full week. Nazir believes that the data from the sensors in his community will help his campaign for clean air. Data will not lie. Sensors will not lie. It's very clear. All you need to do is use that and you'll get the answers you need. That's all we need. The hope is that this technology will empower communities like Tina and Clarissa's to fight for their right to clean air. <laughs> Solomon Serwanja, BBC News, Nairobi. Innovative solution.